And we're rolling on the 9th of September here at UCLA in Los Angeles where it's a warm day. Global warming, you know, global warming. Yes. <laughs> right, Al Gore. Uh, we're about to hear Ian Johnson share with us some good vibrations or persuade us about something. Are we ready? Hi guys, I'm Ian. Hi, Hi Ian. So Ralph Waldo Emerson once said, you can never do kindness too soon, for you don't know how soon it will be too late. Today I want to persuade you to be kind to everyone you encounter and just give off positive vibrations. If you accept my proposal, um, you will see benefits and I will also give you concrete actions that will provide you benefits. But we're starting with two reasons. And it is far healthier, obviously, for you for everyone around you for you to be kinder, but little did you know it's actually far healthier for you too to be kinder to others. The first reason I want to share with you, the first reason I want to persuade you to be kinder to others is that you will actually have a healthier beating heart. My support for this comes from Time Magazine in 2013 when they did a study, um, they covered a study at UNC of 65 people and half of them every day went into a loving kindness meditation class where they focused on the energies of others and like practice like mantras in their head and the result of this class was actually a higher heart rate variability so the people that took the class essentially had like a better powered heart and it sped and slowed with their breathing better higher heart rate variability reduces your risk of cardiovascular diseases and other killers and also regulates your glucose levels and your immune responses I feel like most people are interested in living longer and having a healthier body so Little did you know, you can actually do that and do better for yourself by doing good for others. So why wouldn't you? The next reason I want to show, persuade you to be kind to everyone around you is that you will actually have a better chance of getting a job and keeping it down the line. My support for this comes from Daisy Gruel, who is a Stanford researcher, but she also has a PhD in social, social psychology from Yale. She claims that people who are kind <clears throat> score high on the agreeable, agreeableness trait there are more considerate and just more pleasant people. And she also says that, I quote, they are more likely to get a job and to keep it. I feel like most of us are interested in probably getting a job and keeping it down the line. And when job, people, when job, find, job givers are looking for employers, they aren't generally looking for the people with the best skills necessarily. They're often looking for the best people they can be around in the kindness because they can always teach you the skills later. Now. I want to provide three concrete actions you can take, and then I'll give you some benefits after that will occur. First, smile at everyone you see. It'll make you happy. Second, perform a random act to somebody close to you. Fill up your roommate's car or do the dishes at your apartment. And third, perform a random act of kindness to a stranger. Give $10 to a homeless man or give him the rest of your in and out. I did that last week, and it actually brightened my entire day based on how appreciated he was. If you follow my proposal, there will be some concrete benefits from the concrete action. First, according to the facial feedback effect, if you just smile, you will feel happier because the facial feedback effect says that your emotion and your affect can be varied based on your face, which is true. Next, if you do something nice for your roommate or someone close to you, they're going to remember that later. And when you need quarters for laundry, they're going to hook you up. And finally, Providing something nice and just being nice to someone who will appreciate a lot will make you feel better, as it did with me. In summary, I have shown you two reasons and three concrete benefits or actions and benefits you can take and will receive if you accept my proposal. And go out there, be kind to people. Do it now, do it soon. You can never do it too soon because you don't know how soon it will be too late, much like Emerson once said. Thank you. 3.43. Let's start over here today. Hi everyone, I'm Vanessa. Hi, Hi Vanessa. Um, I really liked your speech. I like the support that you gave. Like it wasn't just like personal experience, but it was also like supported by research that has been done. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't just ball face assertions. All right. Yes, please. Hi, Alejandra. What is your name? Alejandra. Hi, Alejandra. Kind of like what I've been told, more variation. Like, 
Okay, Ian, let me talk to you about your speech. I'd like you to stay in that box and stay back a little. You're tall, so I was having trouble uh, managing you on the screen, but I got you. Like the Emerson beginning quote and tie back to it, like the whole um, thesis of your proposal, it was good. Your SIG statement was excellent. Your quote from Time Magazine was uh, from 2013, was well explained, and you explained it. I would like you to have uh, stayed still when you said, I feel this way about it, and then walk to your next point. Yeah, I like point. forgot that I had that last point, and I was already like over here, and I was just like, I'm in yeah. sleep, I gotta still make that point. <laughs> On your uh, second argument um, from the Scientific American Daisy, Gruwal, um, remember to put the date in, the date gives it, gives it an extra oom, 2012, and you did stress she's from Yale, and that, that helped the credibility of the uh, argument, so that was good, and it's just true, we, um, let's see, can I talk, well, uh, uh, yeah, the, um, let me, let me put it this way, we were just doing hiring and comp studies and one of the things that came up when we were, after we had lectures from all the professors vying to come to the department was, one person said, well, I could just see X easier as my colleague. Uh, X seems that, that he or she, I'm, just, yeah, yeah, person. I'm masking this for obvious reasons, he or she was just seemed so kind and easygoing. She seemed like he seems like they would be easy to really get along with us all. And everyone nodded, and went, "Yeah, that was." And that was an element, not the only element, but that was an element. That was a factor. Yeah. So uh, you're sure right. Your concrete actions were pretty good. Um, I make it a practice when I cross the Golden Gate Bridge to pay the person behind me to blow their mind, their, their toll. Um, on your uh, benefits, I think that's good. Um, I think, uh, you sh I'm glad you asked, emphasized that it benefits will come to you, that you'll feel good being kind and uh, giving off respectful vibrations to people and so forth. Uh, your summary conclusion and tie back were fine. You, you said you wanted to have word economy to keep the speech under 430, have more vocal variety, speak emphatically, have eye contact left and right throughout the speech with glances to the other side of the room. How did it go? Probably rushed the first one even a little bit too much. Mm -hmm. Almost made it to four minutes though, so that was like right there. Mm -hmm. Second one, speak emphatically, I had 50-50 on, and then the yeah. third one, I probably did better during the first half of my speech than the second one. Okay, and the final question on the sort of the sticky thing that we've been mm -hmm. playing with this quarter, what uh, was unexpected in there? What did you design in that was designed to grab us? To go, I just think that like most people don't realize that like when you're looking out for others, you could actually be looking out for yourself. Like they don't really think like when they're being kind to someone, like that they're doing any help for themselves. Like they wouldn't think about that. So that was Almost your like unexpected going point. Out for someone else, when really it's actually benefiting them. Okay, thank you, Ian. Thanks. Okay, next we'll hear from Reagan. Do a present for me. I do all the way to Palo to print the same exact thing. <laughs> Let's give this guy a round of applause. Okay. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, it's better. I always give you my skateboard. <laughs> Ooh, I have to adjust for you. Or that way, a step, please.
Okay, Reagan stands before you managing attention. Communicating respect non-verbally. Finding friendly eyes near the front and the center. Say your name, feel the love, so to speak. Hi, I'm Reagan. Hi, Hi Reagan. Um, I've traveled to Las Vegas last week, and you know Las Vegas is an upscale city in the world. So people work hard in their hometown to earn lots of money, and they will consume it within one night in Las Vegas. So here comes the question. We should spend money thriftily or generously. Today I want to persuade you to convince the point we should spend money generously. Uh, and I will also give you uh, some reasons, uh, actions, and also some benefit will follow if you adopt my proposal. The first reason I'm going to... Uh, oh, sorry. The first reason that I want to to approve con uh, generous consuming is that um, we should, uh, I'm sorry, the rich people is not a money saver, but a money maker and a money consumer. Uh, my support for that is an example of, about Ivanka Trump. Ivanka Trump is uh, the daughter of Donald Trump, who is the monopoly in America and famous for his luxury lifestyle. Ivanka possessed a cruise ship and a villa with 140 rooms, and she also possessed a $2.1 billion inheritance. Um, so Ivanka is totally a luxury girl, but she is also a great money maker. She designed a set of jewelry named Ivanka Trump, and uh, after that, she also established her own brand and now she is the vice president of Trump Enterprise. <coughs> I admire her achievement, and I'm sure I want to be a person like her if I could, because earning enough, in, enough money to enjoy my life is one of my dreams. Uh, the second reason I want you to approve generous consuming is that uh, consuming will cause the increase in inner demand and the increase in the inner demand will cause technology development and economic development. Um, my support for that is, uh, you know, uh, the GDP of China is 13058, and the GDP of the US is 17497. Yeah. Uh, the difference between the two countries is uh, limited, but you know the economic level uh, uh, in uh, I'm sorry the the Asian's economic level is far far behind the America. So you know there is a big difference between consumption view uh, in consumption view between the Asian and America. The, Amer uh, the American prefers spend money with no saves, and they even adopt some excessive consumption. But as for Asian, they prefer save the money into the bank for their children, and uh, to prevent some accidents. So I think this is a negligible reason for the uh, difference between Asian and American in economic. So I'm here to deliver, also deliver three concrete actions you might take. The first one is to make sure what is your favorite and do not adopt when, do not doubt uh, when you decide to spend money on them. And the second one is working hard uh, so that you will have enough power to purchase what you want. The third one is um, Generous does not equal to waste. Please do not forget there is still lots of people living in poverty. So if you adopt my proposal, you will find uh, you're full of motivation while you're working, and you you will also find your life is enjoyable. In summary, I've already told you uh, 
some reasons and actions and the benefit will follow if you adopt uh, my suggestion. So ladies and gentlemen, money will take uh, effect only when you decided to spend them. So please remember, spend money generously represents you respect your money and also respect your life. Thank you. Thank you. 435. I'm Amanda. Hi, Hi Amanda. Um, which is just really interesting. I haven't heard of like a topic, I guess, like this, of persuasiveness. So it was really cool to hear that a friend thinks you had to say about it. Thank you. Improvement. Hi, I'm Logan. Hi, Hi Logan. Logan. Um, we're saying for improvement when you're like reciting certain evidence, you say like where you got it from because I don't really know like where it came from. Okay, Reagan, uh, a unique speech, uh, so that was good. You uh, essentially were urging people to consume and to spend their money, and you felt this would prime the, uh, the uh, economy. And uh, your first reason was you gave a single example of Ivanka Trump and all her money and so forth, and you gave this one example as a role model that we should all follow, I guess, right? Uh, not much evidence or support for where all this, these facts came from, but we'll just trust you on that, right? Right. On your second reason, you cited the fact that the American economy was ahead of the Chinese economy, and you cited that the Americans spend and the Chinese save, and that was your reason. And as Logan pointed out, we didn't really know the date or where these statistics came from or where any of this analysis was coming from. By the way, what is a significant statement in a speech? Um significant statement uh, we should spend money generously no in in a speech in general why do you have a significant statement that's Roman numeral number three I noticed you skipped it and you skipped it in your other speeches I'm a little nervous you don't understand why it's in there what is a significant statement Uh, you mean which of my reasons is the same? No, no. You, you have an intro, you have a thesis, a preview, and then you have a significant statement. Uh, yeah, my significant part is uh, the two reasons, maybe. No, a significant statement is not the reason. A significant statement says, this is significant to all of you, my speech. I'll know you want to hear my speech, because I have some information valuable to you, so listen up. Um, and you didn't have that in this speech. And so have a significant statement in your speech, okay. okay? On your concrete action, they were consistent with your philosophy. Your benefits could have been a little bit more enumerated, although you were over time in all of this. <laughs> Your summary, your conclusion, and I wish you had tied back to uh, going to Vegas and the big spending in the city and showed me that you understood the concept of the tie back. But overall, Reagan, Mr. Ronald Reagan, you got the job done. Thank you. Okay, next we'll hear from Monique. I'm a <laughs> Oh, great. I already put them all away, but okay, great, great. Okay, Monique. Hang on a minute. Let me get my thumbprint in here and my Apple 6. Okay. Wait, 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 
Monique stands before us ready to persuade us. Hi, I'm Monique. Hi, Hi Monique. Monique. According to the national statistic, yeah. let me start over. According to the national statistic, an average of 12,000 people die each year due to DUI related accidents. Today, I want to persuade you all to not drink and drive. I will provide two reasons, actions that you can take, and the benefits that will follow if you adopt my proposal. The first reason why you should not drink and drive is that you can harm yourself, whether it's physically, emotionally, or legally. According to an NY Times fact check, an average of... Oh, according to an NY Times fact check, alcohol impairs your judgment and sense of depth perception, which are vital motor skills in order for you to drive safely. In fact, more than 900,000 people are arrested each year due to drunk driving. So, it's easy to think you're driving safely when, in reality, you are not. I feel strongly about this issue because... I feel that drunk driving is essentially a form of suicide, and I've known too many people who like to play the game of drunk driving roulette. The second reason why you should not drink and drive is that you can jeopardize the life of someone else. According to MAD.org, Mothers Against Drunk Driving, their statistics show that in 2011, more than 11,000 people died due to alcohol-related crashes. In other words, whether they were behind the wheel or if they were a victim, there were fatal consequences for men, women, and children of all ages. I feel passionate about this issue because in high school, one of my classmates did not make it to class the next day. Okay. It turns out that, sorry that I'm smiling, just how I keep my cool, but it turns out that he had been hit by a drunk driver on his way home from work and was killed instantly on impact. Okay. It's depressing to think that there's no guarantee you will make it home safe due to the poor choice of someone else. So the next time you want to YOLO and drink and drive, think about the fatal consequences, not only for yourself, but the life of someone else. Now I want to offer the concrete actions that you can take um, to prevent more deaths from happening. So the first thing you can do is plan ahead. Put aside money for a taxi, an Uber, and have a designated driver. Switch off on that designated driver so that you can all have fun but still make it home safely. Second thing you can do is make sure no one, friend or stranger, drive, drives home drunk. And you can do this by offering them a ride home, offering to get them a taxi. Basically, do not be afraid to speak up. Finally, be responsible. If you are hosting a party, make sure your guests are driving home with someone sober. If you feel they have had too much, take action and offer them to stay the night or take their keys away from them so they don't drive home. It's better to take action in the moment rather than waking up the next day and finding out one of your guests just died. So. Oh my God, and when you have performed these steps of precaution, uh, we are all benefiting by preventing more fatalities that occur from drunk driving. And if you actively take these steps, we are taking strides for our future which includes embracing safety precautions or educating the youth about these issues. Fun fact, when you do not drink and drive, there is 100% chance you will not get a DOI. The source, me. <laughs> so, in summary, I've shown you two reasons why you should not drink and drive, and the actions that you can take and the benefits that will follow if you take this course of action. There should be no doubt in this room that drinking and driving is not good for you or the people <laughs> around you. Regardless of how you help, whether it is choosing not to drink and drive yourself or educating others, we are all working to abolish the statistic that unexpectedly takes the lives of people we love. Thank you. Thank you. 432. Uh, sorry. Disclaimer.
Hi, Hi Tiffany. Tiffany. You, your speech has uh, sufficient evidence to support, uh, and you offer us concrete and practical actions to take. Uh, I think it's good. Thank you, Tiffany. Hi, Improvement. Hi, Hi, this is really good. And that moment when you're talking about your classmate, where you're trying to not get emotional, I think that would have been a kind of a nice thing to make the whole audience kind of feel um, the pain you felt when you lost the classmate. And I would, right. thought it would have been nice to see your emotion. Right. Um, we can start there. We want to learn to walk the razor's edge, where we felt felt sensing is the expression I've invented for it where we bring it back slightly just enough to feel it and keep it going it's the right it's hard to walk that razor's edge it's, you know it's a very thin line between emotionalism and rationality but we want to be right there on the razor's edge I just great your intro, uh, 12,000 people die every year, it would have been nice to have a date, but it still was an arresting fact, and it was good. Um, your thesis statement was fine, you skipped your significant statement, and I was hoping to show Reagan that other people knew how to do a significant statement, but uh, you had a good, you wrote a good one too. On your main body, your first reason, again, your New York Times uh, article on fact check wasn't dated, and uh, so you needed to say what date that was to give it more credibility orally. I know it's in your bib, but it's not in the ears of your listeners, say, yeah. Um, and uh, I like your metaphor of the you know form of suicide. I thought that was excellent and good. On your uh, second reason, uh, you did cite the date of your statistics, 2011, and 11,000 people die. Um, uh, Yo, low. Do we all know what that means? Yeah. Do you? Uh, no. 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 Okay. <laughs> what does YOLO mean? You only live once. <laughs> you only live once. Okay. Good. So, uh, so you only live once. <laughs> no, you already understood what I was saying. So okay. <laughs> um, I think with an international audience, you need to explain your acronyms, actually. Uh, and I would have liked you to, uh, as we already said, uh, walk the razor's edge a little better at that point. Your concrete actions were fine, your benefits were fine, they ran a little long, but they were good. Your summary, your conclusion, and tie back. I would have liked you to have mentioned the 12,000, again, more emphasis with your voice, so we have a clear sense that we're coming a full circle and tying back. Your goal is less stuttering, more fluid and comfortable with the audience. Voice projection, better word economy. Do not lose focus on structure of speech. How did it go? Oh man, I didn't accomplish any of those. I don't know, because like in the first paragraph I realized I messed up and that kind of set like the precedent for the rest of the speech where I just like, dang man, that sucks, but what can you do, Kanye shrug, so, yeah. Yeah, whatever. Um, one thing I want to say about um, uh, when things go wrong is try not to call attention to it. I'll try not to say, boy, I blew that, or boy, I screwed that up, or at the very end, oh, that was a lousy speech, or ooh, you know, oh my God, oh. Mm -hmm. because that will lower people's grading of you and your and their expectations. I mean, you don't want to do that. So overall, you got it done, and it was a good topic that you chose. So thank you. Yeah. Okay, let's hear from. Is there a Teresa? Yes. Teresa fan. Teresa. Fan. Yes. Fan or fam? Hello. Hi, Teresa. Hi. Hang on a minute. Take a step forward. Get in the power stance. 
power stance, feet wider than your shoulders. Prisoner's managing attention. She's on her phone. Communicate. He's on his phone texting. They're very bad. Communicating respect non-verbally. Finding friendly eyes near the front and the center. Say your name. Sorry, I'm jumping for the Say your I'm name. Feel the love. Start your speech. Hi, I'm Teresa. Hi, Teresa. Hi, Teresa. Okay. How many people do you think reside in Los Angeles? Can I get any guesses? Please. 20 million. That's, a, that's a stretching it a little. Any other guesses? 10 million. 10 million. Actually, it's about 3 million. 3 million people actually reside in Los Angeles. Yeah. So now I want you to close your eyes and I want you to imagine all 3 million of those people dead. That's right, dead. Oh, you can open your eyes now. <laughs> 3 million dogs and cats are euthanized each year due to humans not, or due to abandonment because they were not, or their parents were not neutered. Okay. Today I want you to, to persuade you to neuter your pets. I will offer you two reasons and offer you some benefits that will follow if you accept my proposal. I know this may sound a little daunting because all living beings should be able to reproduce. But when they do reproduce and their offspring can't be cared for, they're ultimately abandoned and left in animal shelters or on the street. And some living being has to pay the price for the irresponsibility of a human's decision not to neuter their pets. The first reason that I want you to understand is just how many dogs and cats die each year and how many can be prevented. According to PETA statistics at the end of 2014, 3 million dogs and cats died every year and 75% of these could have been prevented if they were or if their parents were neutered and they wouldn't have been produced. I feel astonished by these numbers because so many innocent lives are being taken for absolutely no reason. Veterinarians actually encourage neutering your pets and a lot of places offer it for free and the process is so simple. I personally have had three dogs and I took them all to get neutered. I simply called the vet, made an appointment, went in and the process was over in about an hour and I took my pets home and took care of them for a little while and they were all better. The second thing I want you to understand is that neutering your pets is beneficial for, for them because when they're not neutered and they have all the sexual organs to reproduce, they can become a lot of really aggressive. Like you can't play with them toyfully because everything just turns aggressive and they take it too far. When you neuter your pets, they're, they become calmer. Um, with our first dog Nike, we didn't know like we didn't know what was happening with him. Like we would be playing fetch with him, and he would get so angry and se sexually aggressive. So we called our vet, and he said that we should get him neutered. And after that, he became much calmer and much more playful, just as he was when he was a puppy. Third, I want to offer you some actions you can take. First, especially if your pet is adopted, check th that they're neutered. Second, call your vet and schedule an appointment. And third, but most importantly, actually follow through with the appointment and neuter your pets. In summary, I have offered you two reasons and some concrete action you can take. And some benefits that will follow if you take these are that you'll be saving so many innocent lives. And that's honestly beneficial in itself. Your pets will be happier and you'll be happier too. There should be no doubt in this room that you should neuter your pets. Don't worry about your animals going extinct. Trust me, there will be irresponsible people in the world who do not neuter their pets. And an alternative, a lot of people might say, is putting your pets in a no-kill shelter. Well, that honestly is a fate much worse than death. They suffer years of being locked into a cage, which causes them much more psychological damage. Okay. So out of those three million dogs and cats, or out of the three million Los Angeles residents, you can be sure that not all of them have kind, loving souls, but animals do. 
You come home after a long day and they're so excited to see you because they love you. So love them back and get them neutered. Thank you. 432. Hi, Rita. I like the speech, I like the subject, it was new, and you followed the show through. Thank you, Rita. Hi, I'm Abraham. Hi, Abraham. Oh, I think what you did was like, in like, sight of where you got some information. I think like, I was like, a lot of it was just personal. Like I think the only one was like the vet, but yeah, otherwise you like sight of it. Okay. For some statistics from some reputable source. Okay. Good. Well, Teresa, let's talk about your speech. Stay in the power stand. Um, <clears throat> you started off with an arresting fact or a rhetorical question you wanted people to guess and close their eyes. Not exactly my favorite form of introduction, but, you know, it works okay. One, I heard some one person yell out, there's six million people in L.A. County proper. So, you know, I, I don't know what the proper figure is, but, you know, you, got, you, were trying, you were trying for a big, large figure that matched the number of animals euthanized. And uh, so you... You got that vivid picture out of your intro, so that was fine. Um, your thesis preview was fine. I liked your significant statement. You had a uh, a good thought on why why this topic was significant. On the main body, uh, you quoted PETA, and you said it was in 2014, and that was, I guess, what... Uh, Abraham either he didn't hear or didn't like it. PETA is, has a controversial history, so maybe a different source, too, would have been good that's a little less controversial. But it's okay. Uh, you know, you did have some statistics in there. So, um, and you gave us a... Um, uh, follow that with your personal story, and uh, that seemed to work out okay. On your second uh, reason, you, you, you rely completely on your personal example, uh, which is fine. I said you can use your own experience as evidence, and you did that, so that was fine. On your concrete actions, they were consistent with what you were proposing people to do. You skipped the benefits, and then you kind of zip, came back to them a little bit. I would have stressed them a little bit more. Uh, your summary, your conclusion, and your tieback were fine. Um, your, uh, I guess your goals are back here. And this last thing you said, I want to connect more to my personal stories because they are what I relate to the audience most. I need to speak more fluidly, and this may be done by me remembering the main points of the paragraph and going off that instead of directly off my paper. How did it go? Um, that was like a huge issue like in my last speech. Like, uh -huh. That's why it went so long. So I felt like this is better. Like I didn't try to memorize my speech. I just Good. memorized like what it was about, like the intro, the thesis, and then like I just went off of that. Yeah, you were extemporaneous, which is what I've been trying to teach all quarter. Thank you. Now, um, my other question to you is what was unexpected in this speech? What was that made it more sticky? That's why I, I changed it a little, like, after I completely finished the book, because, yeah. like, I wanted to have, like, that, you know, surprise element, yeah. so that's why, like, that was, like, what my intro was about. Well, to be a real surprise, to make it shocking how many uh, animals are euthanized and had to dr dramatize it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much, Teresa. Okay, next we'll hear from Logan Reynolds. Hi, Logan. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, can we go over that way a little bit? Hang on a second, I gotta adjust the camera. Take a step forward, please. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, last but not least, we're about to hear, maybe, from Logan's going to now persuade us. Hi, I'm Logan. Hi, Hi Logan. Logan. Okay, so how many of you like to go out to eat at restaurants? Raise your hand if you do. <laughs> okay, how many of you know that if you don't tip your server that they could end up paying for your meal? Today I want to persuade you to tip your server when you go out to eat. I'm going to provide you two reasons why you should do that, three concrete ways you can do that, and benefits that you'll get from tipping your server. So according to the U.S. Department of Labor today, if you look at it today, um, tipped employees, aka your servers, are only federally mandated to earn $2.13 an hour. That means that that's all they have to make if they make $30 more in tips in a month, and they're going to make $130 in tips a month. That's in all of the United States, but California is different. We do uh, abide by the minimum wage. However, we um, servers get deducted off all of the sales that they make at restaurants. So their bi-weekly salaries are always way less than you think. So the first reason that you should tip your server is they that's a job. They're relying on tips to make a living. And most servers, yeah, they are in college trying to work through, trying to pay for the apartment, trying to pay their car payment. They're not relying on you to pay for their luxury vacations or anything like that. But also, there's, there's there, I know a bunch of servers who, that's their, that's their careers. They're a server. Um, my support for this comes from my own experience. I worked in a restaurant, and um, whenever I would make a sale or a credit card tip, they would get straight deducted from my <coughs> paycheck at the end of the week. And I feel strongly about this because... Although I was just a student, I didn't really care, like, I'm just here to make some extra money. Um, there's a server there named Tam, and that was, she was about 36, and she worked three serving jobs. She would work in the morning at my restaurant, she would go to another one, then she'd go to another one at night. And she would always ask me about college, like, hey, like, how'd you, because she had a daughter. And so she was paying for all of these expenses for her daughter through her tip money, and, I mean, I don't know, what else. you should tip your server, she's trying to get her kid to college. So, the second reason why I think you should tip your server is because the reasons why we don't typically aren't their fault. So, I, as I said, my support from this comes from my own experience again because I worked in a restaurant. I saw how many times the kitchen staff would mess up orders. So, say you would order a medium steak, and granted you are allowed to have that medium rare steak and you should have it, but mm -hmm. if the kitchen messes it up, it's going to reflect on your server, even though it wasn't your server's fault. And in any other job... People make mistakes all the time. Retail will ring you up for the wrong price, or something like that, and they don't get dug it off their paychecks for their mistakes, but servers do pay for other people's mistakes all the time. So well, then I would like to offer some concrete ways you can uh, tip your server. So first, you can obviously do what I said and just tip your server. Secondly, you can evaluate your server's performance correctly if they actually are being not not do their job, then by all means don't tip them, they're not doing their job. But just evaluate, hey, is this their mistake or is this someone else's? <coughs> Thirdly, if you can't afford a tip, I just suggest you don't go out to eat. It's a privilege and a thing to go out in a restaurant, and if you can't tip, then you should, it's probably cheaper just to stay inside anyway. So, benefits from doing this is, if you're tipping, you're properly compensating someone from their job. You wouldn't not pay your babysitter, so don't not tip your server. And um, secondly, you're going to have a better dining experience. Like we've read in the Make It Stick book, we vibe off emotions and attitudes. And if we're treating our server the way they should be treated, and our server is going to repay that back to us. So in summary, I've told you two reasons why you should tip your server, three concrete ways you can do this, and some benefits that will come out of it. And 
there should be no doubt in this room that you should tip your server. And I just hope that next time you go out to eat, and if you don't tip, that they could only be making $2.15 an hour, and they could end up paying for your meal. Thank you. 420. Start with your name, please. Hi, I'm Lee Van. Hi, Hi Lee Van. I like your speech. Uh, I like the whole you connected back your you know service and kind of had that uh, you know going. We kind of could do that. Um, Improve it. Hi, I'm Sarah. Hi, Sarah. Hi, Sarah. Um, I think you can have more eye contact with us and. You can add more credible statistics and scores in your speech. Okay. Okay, Logan. Um, let's talk about your speech. You chose to talk about something near and dear to your heart, so that helped. Um, I could feel your passion about it. I guess you had been a server. Um, I was hoping for some juicy stories where someone left you zero or da 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 da, but we didn't get that, but that's okay. Um, you started with an arresting fact about people actually end up paying for your meals, and you tied back to that, so that was pretty interesting and pretty shocking, and um, uh, <clears throat> That worked well. Uh, you quoted the Department of Labor as uh, your server gets $2.13 an hour, but you didn't give us the date of when you found that statistics. Remember date and source orally, right? To give it credibility when you're making it. Um, and I, it was a pretty good explanation of explaining to people. People think servers get 15 bucks an hour plus all the tips. <laughs> Wrong. You know, they their tips are deducted and, you know, factored into their hourly wage, which is really unfair. Uh, your significant statement thus was, was significant and well explained and good. Um, on your uh, first reason, it was um, more of a personal uh, example, right? You ha In fact, I noticed you had uh, a quote from HowStuffWorks.com, but you didn't really cite it. So remember to use the statistics you have in your uh, presentation. Uh, you gave the example of your friend Tam, and that was a pretty compelling story working three jobs, um, but again, it probably would have been helpful to have um, some, uh, there are aggregate statistics <laughs> out there about how tough it is for waitresses and stuff. Um, on your second reason, I thought your argument that people blame the servers for crummy uh, cooks and everything, and busboys and everything else. Uh, was a good argument that people should uh, factor in. Uh, concrete action were okay. I was sort of hoping you'd say something about 20%, 18%, 15%, 10%, I don't know. Um, and the benefits were fine. Summary, conclusion, and tie back were all fine. You came within the time limit. Your goals were to make better eye contact, more vocal variety, and more purposeful hand gestures. How'd it go? Mm, uh, not eye contact. Okay, and what's what? How can we work on that? What do we need to do for that? Uh, I mean, I don't know. I don't really want to look at anyone today because I look scary. So that's kind of oh, you look scary today. <laughs> okay, well, does she look scary today? Okay, no. no, you don't even ask people in that. Okay, see, so. None of us think you look scary today, so uh, you're fine. So that's all self-internalized. Uh, mm -mm, so, um, and the final question is, what was your, what was the thing that you, you put in that was unexpected? Was it your? Um, I thought it was 
be answered mm. because most people don't think that the, you make an hourly wage, like, what's wrong? They, but they all get together. It's on to top of it, hour. yeah. Like in other states, like Texas, they literally only make $2 an hour. Yeah. Okay, good. Thank you very much. Okay, now we have some unfinished business to take care of in the form of, let's see, yeah, film speeches. Is Does Vanessa do her film speech? She did it? A while ago, yeah. A while ago. How about Kent? Okay. Evaluation for my persuasion is in the final packet. Okay, in fact, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to change cameras. So what do you do when there's a delay? Uh, I can talk to them. Yeah. So you've been partying, man? Yeah, you're going to party Starbucks. Yeah, she said she had a final five. Yeah. That's a good deal. 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 That's